you go down to New York City, it's dead. It's dead. Dead. Times Square, dead. Broadway, no neon lights shining on Broadway, dead. Oh, it'll come back. It'll come back. No, it won't come back. And the people in China are using less and less cash and just more and more digital. And think about it. It's the Chinese government. They know everything about you, what you do, where you go, when you wait, whenever, whenever, whatever. The business of America is war. The business of China's business. Oh yeah, Salenti, calm down. You have to be proper like us. We talk very properly as we slaughter the people in India and as we colonize the rest of the world. Hello everybody, Simon Dixon here and welcome to episode 6 of Bitcoin Hard Talk, where we give you hard talk about the hardest form of money. It's Christmas 2020, I've already uploaded my year in review and covered my 2021 forecast. I do that with a very serious face, but because it's Christmas, I wanted to bring a guest for you for Christmas that brings a lot more humor, adds some colorful language, but if you're easily offended, this is probably one you don't want to watch. Gerard Salente has been a trend forecaster and he always covers things, very controversial topics, and we held no punches on this one. We covered government digital currencies, we covered gold, silver, and Bitcoin, we covered China, we covered market manipulation through the futures markets, and also some modern monetary theory, the Fed, and all sorts of other stuff. So I'm going to head over right to that interview and enjoy the Christmas episode of Bitcoin Hard Talk. Okay, Gerald Salente, welcome to Bitcoin Hard Talk. Pleasure to have you here. You've been the master of trends. So today we're going to talk about trends. Um, Firstly, welcome to the show and thanks for joining us. Well, my pleasure. Thanks for having me on. Okay, so um, let's talk about a few trends. Obviously, we always talk about uh, Bitcoin here, Um, but Bitcoin has been a huge trend. Um, Now, Gerald, you're mostly known for your um, bullishness on gold and more, uh, I think this year, you you think that silver, or next year rather, silver is going to be outperforming gold. Um, Why don't you tell us a bit about um, what you're seeing as a non-Bitcoiner in terms of trends? Well, you know, we we had forecast Bitcoin rise, um, you know, for years. And a matter of fact, in June, um, I I was silver actually in June, but uh, we've been very bullish on Bitcoin in our trends journal going back, I'm thinking uh, May, May, May or June, um, when Bitcoin broke over 12,000, whenever that was, we said that that was the breakout point for it to rise higher. So that we, that's in writing in our magazine. And on silver, silver is, uh, the ratio of gold to silver is way off right now. And we believe that silver, you're going to see a higher, spike percentage wise than gold in the coming year. The reasons being, or the, whether it's Bitcoin, gold or, or silver, is that around the world, central banks are dumping in trillions of dollars worth of digital money backed by nothing and printed on nothing to artificially prop up the failing economies. In the United States, we just had a uh, what, 900 billion plus another 1.2 trillion or something you know, dumped into the markets to uh, artificially prop them up. So the, the people that know what's going on know that these currencies that the central banks are just creating out of thin air are virtually worthless. And they, we, we believe there's going to be actually new currencies coming out and they're going to be digital. And of course, we, one of our magazine covers uh, several months ago was they're going from dirty cash to digital trash. So they don't want you to touch that dirty money because it's going to get you sick. It's only been there for centuries, you know, so don't worry about it, but we got to get rid of it. But it will enable them to track every penny that you've spent, where you spent it, who you spent it on, so they get their money from it. It's called taxes. That's the moron word for it. That's the imbecilic word for it, so they could get taxes. 
So everybody get this straight. These are low life pieces of garbage scum crap called politicians, poly ticks, many ticks that suck the blood out of your life. And they want your money. They want your money so they don't have to work a day in their lives and they could keep sucking off the public tit. So they're gonna go digital, particularly at a time when you start seeing economies go down and they need more money to prop up their phony operations called governments and hire all these useless bureaucrats. So the world is going to go digital. And the younger generations are more digital than the older generations. So they're going to go into more digital coins than going into gold and silver is the way we see it. Yeah. Um, so before the, the bullish um, signal that you gave um, earlier when it broke 12,000, um, how would you say you, your, um, your, your, your trend forecasting for Bitcoin was uh, prior to that? Um, well, did, you, did you see it as something, because I know you've been mostly known for gold. Are you starting to see more and more people um, look at Bitcoin now, or is it or still something that many um, gold investors are, are, are resistant to? The gold, yeah, the gold people are resistant to it because they want the physical, and that's what makes it different. And But again, the market is big for it because it, you, you, when you buy gold, you, you a lot of people can't afford to buy an ounce. What are we talking now about? You know, eighteen hundred and eighty-three dollars an ounce. But you could buy a tiny bit of a Bitcoin. Of course, you could buy you know uh, ETFs on gold, but most people don't know how to do that. So the older generations are more gold and silver. And the other thing with silver is important is that you know they're going to be using more and more silver in um, in renewable energies. It's used in you know your keyboards, your phones. But there's no stockpiles of silver. When you throw your keyboard out, you throw your phone out, that's the end of it. So they, they have to keep creating new, new, new stockpiles of it. So they don't have stockpiles. So that's why we see silver being very valuable in the future because of it's also for its industrial uses. And, and again, as an alternative to the digital trash that trash. You know, banks are making yeah. up, uh, we had someone writing for us a number of years ago that was negative on Bitcoin. And uh, I, I didn't agree with him and I got rid of the guy. Uh, so that was, that was about five years ago, four or five years ago. Uh, and, but I've been very uh, bullish on, on Bitcoin uh, over the years. And I, again, I, I continue to see it rising. Okay. So you talk about um, governments wanting to issue these uh, central bank or government issued digital currencies, um, and um, I think in other part in other of your work and trends, you're seeing a real rise in the growth of uh, China. Now, obviously, China has been empire building, and it seems like they're first to market with five G, and it seems like they're first to market with digital currencies. Do you see um, the world following China now? Where where do you see this going? Well, China, again, one of our top trends for 2021 is China 2021. And as you pointed out, you know, what China has been uh, the leader in digital currency. And the people in China are using less and less cash and just more and more digital. And think about it. It's the Chinese government. They know everything about you, what you do, where you go, when you wait, whenever, whenever, whatever. You know, the government runs the country. And that they digital was perfect for them. So they know everything about everything. And they, the, as I say, the 20th century was the American century. The 21st century is the Chinese century. The business of America is war. The business of China's business. The Belt and Road Initiatives, or what they call it now, you know, the, uh, the old Silk Road, you know, they're, they're building what? How all the ports that they own around the world, all the developments that they're doing around the world, particularly Africa and the developing nations. And again, you look what happened with the, um, when the virus broke out. They couldn't stop the riots in Hong Kong. They were going to be writing about it week after week. All of a sudden, the virus breaks out in Wuhan, China, and they locked down Hong Kong, and that was the end of the protests. Over. 
pass the security law. It's over. It's finished. They couldn't stop it. And I used to be on Hong Kong radio a lot and talking, you know, off air with the, with the reporters. No, we're not stopping. We're going to keep fighting. You know, guess what? It's over. China's going to rule the world. All the Western nations sold out their countries by offshoring manufacturing. And I'm not making this up. You go look at the numbers. China's gross domestic product was like this, going into 2000. And then that slimy, low-life piece of murderous garbage crap that Americans love, Slick Willie Clinton, the guy that also sold out our jobs with NAFTA, bringing him to Mexico. And I say a low-life garbage piece of murderous crap with over 500,000 Iraqi children he killed under the age of five when they put sanctions on Iraq in the 1990s and his destruction of Yugoslavia. So it's just not empty words. He's a murderous, lousy bastard. And he sold, and the European countries sold out China, uh, sold out their country when they brought China into the World Trade Organization. You look at the numbers. Well, they come into the World Trade Organization. By the way, two weeks after 9-11, George Bush signed it in. Nobody saw it. The GDP skyrocketed. They couldn't make crap in China. They didn't have the manufacturing technology. Every one of these Western nations sent everything over there to use slave labor at the time so they could bring up their profits and bring it back to their country and mark up the prices. Now China doesn't need anybody. The slimy low lives sold the countries out. Oh, you don't want to have those dirty manufacturing jobs in your country. No, no, no. You could get a job now at Amazon. You could pack boxes. You could wear it, walk in, work in a warehouse. You can make, you know, after taxes and expenses, you'll be left with sixty-two fifty a week and have a hernia. It's great. We got rid of those dirty jobs. China's ruling the world. What you, and everybody with a brain bigger than a pea, get this in your head. If the war breaks out, China wins. America, who just spent $740 billion of our money as the economy's going down, just gave it to the military industrial complex. And these arrogant boys and girls with their attitude all dressed up in their military drag, these generals with all these bullshit crap stuck to their chest. You haven't won a damn war since World War II, so stop your bullshit. So yeah. if a war breaks out, you couldn't even win in Afghanistan. How about Iraq? Hey, look at Syria. Murderous bastard politicians start this crap. And they can't win a war. China's it. The politicians yeah. and the people that all they think about is money, the manufacturers, sold out their countries. The 21st century is the Chinese century. They'll buy up everything. And it seems like um, a lot of these wars that, um, you know, whether physical war is the new commodity or whether it's currency wars um, or trade wars, it seems like there's a, a different form of war that might be fought here. Um, and everywhere you look, it seems like China has positioned itself um, in the empire building um, scenario, even accumulation of gold. Yep. Um, so one of the other things that you've often talked about, uh, Gerald, is the, the manipulation by JP Morgan of um, gold prices. Um, do you see similar things happening um, coming down the trail with uh, Bitcoin as well? Absolutely. Um, and you, you look when Bitcoin prices went down. 2017, right? End of 2017, I believe, wasn't it? December? Yeah, uh, the January 2018 was the beginning of the bear. Right. So it started going down at the end of December. What happened? They allowed, they allowed the, these, these to be traded on the currency markets. I began my career back in the 70s buying futures in gold and silver. 
I put $5,000, I brought it into almost three quarters of a million dollars. And that's when I quit my job when I used to work as a government affairs specialist uh, down in DC in Chicago. He's living between the two places. And anyway, he's number two guy running a trade association. And I hated my job and that, so I made that money and I quit. The futures market's a whole different market. It's a gambling market. So now you got the big players in there They'll drive up the prices and then all of a sudden, boom, they short them real quick and they drop down the prices. To me, the worst thing that could have happened was allowing the cryptocurrencies to be traded in the futures markets because the big gamblers are gonna be in control. They're in control. Everybody get this in their head, the banksters run the world. The criminal organizations, hey, it's Christmas time. Oh, you're not allowed to say Christmas. You're not allowed to have Christmas anymore. You're talking about the wars. They started, this is a COVID war. And all the little imbeciles march off to more war, just like that. Just like they hired Hitler, saluted Stalin and marched off to Mussolini. They all marched off to the COVID war. So what I'm saying is that they, when they put this into the futures market, the banksters are in control. It's Christmas time. The Prince of Peace was murdered after he drove the money changers out of the temple. But on the cross a couple of days later, the same group of bankster criminals are in charge today. Grow up, everybody. The great reset is on, all the doughs at the top, the little businesses are out. Look what they did in the, everybody, they're so happy. They brought Janet Yellen in as the, as the new treasury secretary under the Biden administration, if and when he gets in there. Janet Yellen, the former head of the Federal Reserve, a criminal organization stopped, started up by another piece of garbage crap Piece of scum, may he rot in hell, Woodrow Wilson. The guy said rot in hell because he took us to war in World War I and just helped destroy more of Europe and kill more people in something we should have never been involved in, who brought us to central banks. It was the biggest issue in America in every election since the founding of the country throughout the 1800s, not to have a central bank. What's central bank? A bunch of banksters are running the country. And now, right in front of everybody's eyes, here she is, Janet Yellen, the former head of the Federal Reserve, as Treasury Secretary. Oh, but isn't it nice? Isn't it nice? We have a woman in there. Grow the hell up. A woman in there. And I'm tired of this racist crap. And what? America's not a racist nation. Are they racist? Of course they are. They're imbecile people? Yeah, of course they are. You don't elect a black president if you're a racist nation. And I want equality out there. You want equality? You don't want the best person? Then I say all of the basketball teams and all of the football teams, American football, Western football, you got too many black people. You need to be more equal. Oh, you don't want the best players. Oh, no, no, you got to make it equal. That's the kind of crap they're shoving down our throat. Oh, you got to have more white players there. And how moronic would that be? So I'm going back to yelling because they're making a big deal. They got a woman there. Women are murderers too. You forgot Condoleezza Rice? Yeah, not white rice, man. Condoleezza, black rice, the next mushroom cloud you see, and we got to go kill Saddam Hussein based on lies. Oh, that's all right. Oh, and how about Margaret Thatcher? I forgot about Indira Gandhi. I'm tired of this bullshit. Good and bad comes in every race, creed, and color. Everybody can save their crap and shove it down their throat. I've had enough. I want the yeah. best people working for me. I could care what color, gender, race, creed, who cares? But they do this to get your mind off the bigger issue. And the bigger issue is 
The 1% is in control of everything. All you are are workers on a global plantation of slave land here. They're telling you not to celebrate the birth of the Prince of Peace. How satanic could that be? So what do you think the play is with um, Janet, Janet Yellen? One of the things I've often said is that um, China is starting to look more and more like America every day, and America is starting to look more and more like China every day as they converge into this um, socialist ideal. And it seems like um, merging you know, the Treasury's balance sheet with the Federal Reserve's balance sheet uh, might be a play towards having full control over where the central bank allocates money, putting monetary policy and fiscal policy together. Um, and if I were trying to execute such a strategy, um, then I think Jan Janet Yellen would be exactly who I would put in charge of um, Treasury. Do you think this is a movement towards um, the emergence, the emer uh, you know, the merging of government balance sheets and uh, central bank balance sheets and just being... A more open, I guess the new trend is modern monetary theory. Just why tax people when uh, you can just print it? Yeah, no, you said it, you said it perfectly. You know, the China, yeah. China's become America. America's become China. And look, look at right. yeah, yeah. <laughs> Everybody wears these things, right? Yeah. Everybody, the Chinese used to make fun of the Chinese for wearing these things. And now everybody, and I'm going to wear a designer one. I'm so screwed up in my head. I'm going to make a beautiful designer one and hide my face. And you see these little scum reporters talking like this with nobody around them. And these damn things are totally useless. You read the box. It says it right here. These masks do not eliminate exposure to the risk of any disease or infection. And the reason they wear these in China because they 1.5 million people a year die of the air pollution related diseases. And now it's the Chinese way. It was one of the covers of our magazine, Tank Man 2.0. Remember Tank Man at Tian Tiananmen Square and our great artist Anthony Frieda did the COVID tank. The Chinese mm. way you must obey. Look at the crap shitheads you got running the countries. Look at it in Australia, you got that little boy, Danny Andrews. Look at the crap Macron, the little Gatsone over there in France. Heil Hitler Merkel, they just took the rights away from the German people, just what they did in 1933, and gave it all over to, to the leader. We have to stop the virus. We are closing down your business. But Walmart could stay open in America and all the big stores, you are not essential. And everybody marches off. Everybody yeah. marches off. Look at yes. the little crap head. Did you see what the, did you, you can't make this shit up. Take a look at the health minister of Belgium. She has to weigh about 400 pounds. And she's telling me about health. I got the, this other one over here in, in Pennsylvania. Rachel Levin. L-E-V-I-N-E. -E, Rachel, look it up. The guy that got his balls cut off became Rachel. The guy got three chins and he, she is telling me what to do. You go over there to California, they got this woman, Farrar. She's a skeleton. She looks dead. The one up in Canada, Tam, the health minister, dead, telling people not to have sex. Yeah, she probably hasn't had sex in who knows how long when you look at that chick, man. And by the way, the first book I worked on in 1986 was Natural Healing, a Warner book, a big book. I have an honorary doctorate in the National University of Health Sciences for the work I've done in complementary and integrative medicine. So I don't need any little dick to tell me about health, fitness, and nutrition 
And when you weigh 400 pounds, take it easy. And that's what's going on around the world. And I'm angry because of the cowardice of the masses sucking up and bowing down and taking this crap from some shitheads called prime ministers, premiers, governors. I got this Governor Cuomo over here in New York, a daddy's boy. He'd be nobody if daddy wasn't Mario with an attitude telling me what to do. And don't forget to get vaccinated. Yeah. Yeah, truly tragic what's happening to the small business right now, being, um, you know, having to give up all of their oh. um, sales and uh, take oh. that over to everyone that's shopping online with Amazon. Um, it's, it's, a, it's a real tragedy at the moment. So moving into um, 2021 then, um, Gerald, what's, uh, what, what, do you, what do you see ahead? Do you see um, more of the same from 2020? What should people be doing? You know, I don't tell people what to do, but I would get it. I would, again, speaking only for myself, gold, silver, and, and uh, whatever cryptocurrency you believe in, Bitcoin. And um, what's going to happen is they're going to make it look like there's a recovery because they're dumping in all this money. Then they're going to relax things a little bit. Yet yeah, everything's going to go up. Everything's going to go up. No question about it. But new jobs won't be created. People that lost their jobs will be going back into their old jobs. Look at the numbers already. I'm not making this up. The 1% has re reaped in trillions since this has gone down and as everybody else has been going broke. So it's going to be an artificial recovery. The moron masses are going to believe it, but the reality is not there on the streets. You're looking at the numbers, again, we write about this every, in the magazine every week. Ah, all the businesses that are going out of business that are never going to reopen again. All the millions and hundreds of millions of lives that have been destroyed. What took, you go down to New York City, it's dead. It's dead, dead. Times Square, dead. Broadway, no neon lights shining on Broadway, dead. Oh, it'll come back. It'll come back. No, it won't come back. It'll come back at a marginal rate. So we're going to see the greatest depression. It's going to get very worse. You're going to see uprisings around the world. Survivalism is a big trend. We write about it now in a magazine. And it, 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 the magazine is a weekly. That's the fourth most read stories in survivalism. We have a lot about economics and a lot of other things. So people better prepare to learn how to fight. Yeah. You, you look at the numbers. I just had an article over here. Let me see if this is it now. About um, in New York City, they got homicide rates are, they've gone up 96%. Shooting, shooting has gone up 96% since this broke out. So you better learn how to take care of yourself. Mm. When so people lose Depression everything and have nothing left to lose, they lose it. Yeah. So the Great Depression of the 2020s, um, do, you see, do you see markets being able to completely disjoint themselves from this economic reality like we're seeing now? Stock markets at all-time highs, and yet, you know, the, the trends that you've been talking about and unemployment, um, do you see that as something that will eventually reflect in each other? Or do you just think that markets are no longer markets? It's just the Federal Reserve trading against the rest. That's all it is. It's they're rigged. I mean, I mean, they were going down before this happened. Go back to September 2019. From September 2019 to January 15th, 20th, they dumped in $7 trillion into the repo markets to artificially prop them up. They've been propping them up since. What do you got? Zero negative interest rates around the world. The gamblers borrow for nothing and gamble. So they're going to do everything they can to artificially prop it up. Everything, everything, everything. And now, again, you got the Federal Reserve as the Treasury Secretary. They've taken over the government in front of everybody's eyes. And what do you think that um, spells for the future of the dollar then? Oh, the dollar, it, it's, 
The only reason a dollar's up is because the other currency, if the dollar's going down now, was it a two and a half year lows? But the, um, I mean, what currencies are going to go up? I mean, the euro is going up. How the hell could the euro go up when, when Europe is in such a mess? So the dollar, you know, it, the yuan has to get a lot stronger and it's very small. It's one, only about 3% of the trading market. And uh, so right now the dollar is still going to be, you know, relatively stable where it is, but it's going to keep going down. And uh, America to me is England in 1911, you know, just before the world war broke out. And they were the sun never sets on the English empire. They're so proper as they murder people all over the world. I, oh yes, Lenti, calm down. You have to be proper like us. We talk very properly as we slaughter the people in India and as we colonize the rest of the world. Anyway, when they started going down, the pound died and the dollar came up. And that's what you're gonna see with America. The dollar's gonna go down and the yuan's gonna go up. Again, the 21st century is gonna be the Chinese century. Okay, so you heard it there. Any closing remarks you'd like to leave people with? Yeah, the, thing yeah, the closing remark is everybody Become the man and woman that you are. You're not put on this earth to take orders from people. You don't give them and you don't take them. Have respect for yourself. And the people forgot two words as they bow down and suck up to these little low life pieces of crap called politicians. Oh, and by the way, I was the, sec I was the assistant to the secretary of the New York State Senate at 26 years old. I designed and instructed America's first course in American politics and campaign technology, how to run political campaigns at St. John's University. I used to run political campaigns in Westchester County, the richest county in America. I have pictures of me and Ronald Reagan. I was with him for an hour and a half when I picked him up when he was doing a a talk for the trade organization that I was the number two guy running. I've been with presidents, prime ministers, and princes. I know what the deal looks like. And that anybody that calls what they have a heart and a soul could look up to this slime and bow down and take their orders as they're slaughtering your life. I would like to say one thing. My definition of hell is taking that last breath and knowing you aren't the person you said you were or could have been. So if you don't stand up for your rights and freedom and peace and justice, all aboard, next train to Auschwitz. And don't forget, put on your mask and don't you talk back to me. No singing for Christmas. No Christmas carols. You will not Spend the holiday with your family, all right? If you're not fighting against that, I don't know what's wrong with you. Somebody robbed your heart, your soul, and your spirit. So don't have any children because you don't want to pass that on to anybody else. So become the person that you are, the free spirit to think for yourself and be the best that you can be. Merry Christmas from the Merry warrior Christmas, of the Prince of Peace. Thank you very much, Gerald. So uh, fight for freedom. Privacy is going to be the big battle. Central bank digital currencies, a new empire, and the Great Depression of the 2020s. Pick with that what you will. Bye, everybody. I hope you enjoyed that interview, and I'm sure you found at least one thing to be offended by in that interview. We also ended on a pretty depressive outlook, but I wanna leave you with something that you can do to be a bit more empowered. I would love to give you a free copy of my book by going to www.retirementplanb.com forward slash book. That's where you can download a free copy of Bank to the Future, Protect Your Future Before Governments Go Bust, which normally sells on Amazon for $27, but you can get a digital copy for free. And I'll even chuck in four videos on how to invest and build and protect your wealth during the Great Depression of the 2020s. That's my free Christmas gift to you. 
So have a great Christmas and a happy new year. And we'll see you in future episodes of Bitcoin Hard Talk. Peace.